in recent years, the green crab population in Maine and New Hampshire has exploded. Scientists say it's because the Gulf of Maine is warming and green crabs thrive in those warmer waters. Green crabs are an invasive species. They've been around Maine and New Hampshire for decades, but as their numbers have soared in the last 10, or years, 10 years or so, they've eaten enormous quantities of clams. And that, of course, has dealt a serious blow to the clamming industry. So what can be done? Well, a researcher at the University of New Hampshire has an idea. At low tide on a beach in Rye, New Hampshire, Gabby Broad is looking for a shellfish that has virtually no commercial value, the green crab. Green crabs are notorious for their ravenous appetites. They eat clams, mussels, and oysters, and they consume them in staggering quantities. They can eat up to how many clams? A single green crab can eat how many clams they in can, a day? Uh, 40 to 50 in a single day. Which really wreaks terrible damage on the clam population. Yes. It's even more terrible for the people who want to harvest them and sell them as a living. So uh, yeah, they are they are voracious and they can really decimate a clam bed, especially the soft shell clam beds, in no time. Part of the work that you're doing now is focused on creating a market for green crabs yes. so that people will harvest them and then sell them and Humans will eat them. Yes. That's the idea, right? Yes, that's the idea. In short, if you can't beat them, eat them. Exactly, exactly. And there's a lot of them, so you would never go hungry. <laughs> the challenge is that there's not a lot of meat in a green crab, right? Right, right. they're not good for a picking market, so a lump yeah, meat market, um, too much effort. So the idea is to try and get them when they molt and they're in the soft shell um, stage. So when crabs mold, they have to get out of their shell, and then for a very brief period of time, their entire body is soft. So you can eat the whole thing, um, very similar to how they do, um, do blue crabs in the south. So you can fry them up and serve the entire organism. And you can eat the shell. And you can eat the shell because it's soft. All right, so. you have been out uh, have been today. Out and you you were finding some green crabs, right? I found these just foraging around, and so that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to trap as many as possible and bring them back to a holding facility and mon uh, monitoring them, so looking for signs that they're going to um, bust out in the next day, week, several, you know, several weeks. So that's what I'm, the research I'm working on is figuring out what those signs are and um, predicting, okay, this one looks like it'll ready, be ready to go in a week. And then that way you can get a whole bunch of them all at once ready to go. A few miles away in downtown Portsmouth, Matt Lewis is cooking in his restaurant, Moxie. Let me just taste this and then we can go. Lewis is one of the chefs Gabby Brott reached out to with the idea of creating commercial demand for green crabs. Before she contacted him, he hadn't cooked with green crabs, hadn't really been aware of them. But he listened as she talked about her goal of getting restaurants to put them on the menu. We started playing around a little bit and then we started getting to the point where uh, they actually became menu items and serving them. How long have you been serving them? It's been about three years. Um, on and off, it, it comes and goes. Cooking with green crabs is challenging because they don't have much meat. Chefs have to coax the flavor out of them. So that we can then use that broth for things like stews or sauces or maybe the base of a risotto or a paella. You obviously have a very discriminating palate. To you, what's the difference between green crab and other types of crab? The green crab is very, it's, it's, it's very robust. The flavor is very intense. Lewis created and serves a seafood stew whose broth is flavored with green crabs. But he agrees with Gabby Brott that the key to creating consumer demand for green crabs will be getting soft shells that can be fried and eaten whole. They're going to sell like wildfire because if you put soft shell crabs on the menu right now, they sell. Everybody wants them. Oh, here we go. It all sounds promising, but even if Gabby Broad can help ramp up demand for green crabs, they are not going away. If you succeed, how much do you think you can reduce the green crab population by? So that is a really excellent uh, question, and I will let you know. But there's so many crabs. The idea is to get them down to a dull roar. I don't think we can eat our way out of this invasion, if you will. Uh, there's so many, like I said, 180,000 eggs per female, and you're already at the millions and billions of them 
from Connecticut to uh, Prince Edward Island. So this might be part of a solution, but it is not the it solution. It is not the solution. A meeting of scientists, chefs, fishermen, and more, all of them interested in developing markets for green crabs, is going on today and tomorrow in Portland. How did the broth taste, though, more Good. Highly? It was good. Okay. That summit is called the Green Crab Working Summit. It was organized by Gabby Brott and others at the University of New Hampshire. I ate the entire bowl. <laughs> okay.